call the meeting to order and then uh, we'll kick it off. Is that all right with everybody? Yep. All right. Let, let it rip. Well, I definitely appreciate that. You bet. Um, good evening and thank you for allowing me to in, indulge you for a couple of minutes. I appreciate the invite from John and through all of you to come and sit and tell you a little bit about economic development. Um, I kind of typed up a bunch of things and I apologize for looking down so much, but I want to make sure that the facts and figures are accurate. Um, so I'll kind of dive into it. Feel free to stop me whenever you want, stop me at the end, ask questions and whatnot. Um, so since I kind of went back, since March of 2020, uh, the legislature and the executive branch have worked together on a series of important issues. Obviously 2020, it's COVID when it began. Um, so the economic development bill of 2020 uh, authorized $626 million in capital funding, focused on housing, business competitiveness, and community development. Uh, included in that were the most significant reforms to zoning in decades. Uh, multiple COVID extension bills were signed into law uh, to accommodate remote participation, outdoor dining, we want to talk economic development right there, uh, to-go cocktails, uh, remote notarization, telehealth measures, things of the sort. Um, December of 2021, the COVID-19 relief spending bill dedicated nearly $4 billion uh, for a variety of initiatives, including nearly $600 million for the state's housing ecosystem, uh, $60 million for cultural assets, and $75 million a year mark directly to small businesses. November of 2022, Governor Baker signed a $3.76 billion spending bill, which I'll touch on later, it included vital investments in housing, climate, Healthcare, communities, and important policy reform. So I kind of checked all the boxes with such a big bill. Um, in that bill, you'll hear, or I'll at least tell you now, $1.15 billion was for health and human services, $515 million for education, where $150 million was to uh, stabilize early education and care providers, uh, $565 million towards clean energy and environmental infrastructure, $112 million towards transportation, 417 million to housing production and affordability, 220 million to Echo Dev uh, directly, 153 million for targeted business investments and relief. Uh, there's a portion that went to strained hotels, businesses reaching underserved markets, uh, and then uh, specifically a 30 million for small business support. 25 million was for broadband infrastructure. Uh, there are some communities still out there that have trouble dialing up. Uh, 42 million for community development infrastructure projects. Out of that, one stop for growth uh, projects is a big one, 35.4 million to fund the projects that have applied for community development grants, such as MassWorks, uh, underutilized properties program, housing choice, and other uh, things. So, and then the economic development recovery grants, there's 4.4 million in flexible funding. So, that was kind of a quick summary of COVID and whatnot. Um, speaking about MassWorks, which Grafton has utilized, we were able to secure a couple years ago over a half a million dollars to extend all of the conduit down the Route 30 corridor, which um, obviously we're seeing now the fruits of the labor, and that's kind of been my vision since I've been in, is that's the area that we can really develop. We worked unbelievably uh, hard and strenuous in a long time at getting two parcels of property off of the state's hands. You have the parcel at the end of Institute, and then you have the parcel over that's being developed. Um, and out of those, we got them into mass, uh, mass development. And obviously, that's kind of when we extended the Route 30 corridor and all the conduit it tied in there. So it makes it a very, very, very attractive, in my opinion, and probably all of ours, a very attractive parcel. Um, so included in this year's round, the Baker Polito administration awarded 391 MassWorks grants to 197 communities which was investing over seven, uh, 709 million in public infrastructure projects throughout the state. The grants have directly supported the creation of over 26,000 new housing units and tens of thousands of construction new and permanent jobs, while also leveraging approximately 17 billion in private investment. One of the biggest things that the prior administration really liked to see was that other individuals, if you were gonna work with them, had skin in the game. So when we had someone developing property on Route 30, when they were already ripping up the road, we said, hey, can we just piggyback on top of you? Worked out great. The Shared Streets and Spaces Grant Program, Grafton got a $400,000 grant not too long ago. Uh, 494 Shared Streets and Spaces of, uh, grants have been awarded by the state, investing over $49 million for communities to create new space for outdoor dining, walking paths, which was the big one on Milford Road, 
uh, and to improve connectivity and commerce. Um, the Community One Stop for Growth initiative, uh, last week the Healy Driscoll Administration uh, announced the opening of a one-stop application process. So basically it's a single application portal that all municipalities can access to be considered for multiple economic development grant programs. It's actually 12 of them simultaneously. Uh, the one-stop format uh, formally launched in January of 2021. The programs within the portal are largely supported by capital authorizations and operating appropriations approved by the legislature. Um, now we'll kind of get a little more focused in some of the meat and potatoes of what I did as the ranking member on economic development and emerging technologies in the last David, session. if I could stop you for one yeah. sec. Could you just give us a brief overview of that committee? Can you tell us how it's made up? And yeah, without yeah. a doubt. Um, so I'm very fortunate that um, my leader on the minority side thought enough of me to put me in that position, uh, which is considered a leadership spot on our side. Um, and so then the chair of the committee for the past session was Jerry Paracella from Beverly. And Jerry and I have gotten along very, very well to the point that our offices were in the same suite prior. So when he was named chair of the committee and I was the ranking member, one of the biggest things in front of us was the sports wagering bill, which I will get into. And the great thing about it is the relationship that we've worked to forge together. He said, listen, I want Dave in every meeting that we have about this bill and any bill moving forward. And that's not just the committee process hearings, that was all the prior hearings. So when any individuals approached us to talk about any emerging technologies or economic development initiatives in the Commonwealth, he had me there for the informal portion of it. So it's a wide ranging committee as you can imagine because sure. anything can kind of be considered <laughs> economic development. The emerging technology side is fascinating. You know, you see a lot in the healthcare space which kind of then lets us join a couple of committees together. Um, but another thing, down the line would be iGaming or iLottery as I continue to think about sports wagering. Um, so I'm sure we'll hear a ton about that. But what happens is every term, however many bills are filed, they all go to the Rules Committee. The Rules Committee then differentiates where they should go and they distribute them out, transportation, higher ed, echo dev, and then from there, as long as the bills were filed <clears throat> within the first like two or three weeks of the session, they're guaranteed a public hearing date by February or so of the next year. There's different dates out there, but um, it's called Joint Road 12. So what happens is there's a mad rush in the beginning of session to file bills. And so I would say somewhere in the neighborhood of six to 7,000 bills were filed in the last two weeks. So now they're going through the process of dividing them. And then once we have the bills established, then we can break them down into, assuming I'm on economic development again, which I asked to be on, um, we can then break them down into public hearings. Uh, but it is, it's a wide-ranging bill, uh, excuse me, committee. So for an act regulating sports wagering, um, it was a monumental bill that we were able to pass the last day of session, which was the last day of July. It's a, obviously it's a two-year term that I get to sit in on. And the second year, at the end of July, uh, if you can imagine the legislature is like a bunch of high school or junior high kids where we wait before we have to procrastinate. And then when we feel the pressure of a deadline <coughs> looming, we do the book report, we do the paper, or in this case, we get the compromise bills done. Um, so for that bill, I was one of six conference committee members. What happens is if there is a bill uh, between the House and the Senate that differs on language or differs on a dollar amount, and it can be A or N or 999 or 1,000. It, you know, it, it could be that close and similar. But if there's any differences, they establish this conference committee. It's made up of three members of the House of Representatives out of 160 and three members of the Senate out of 40. And so I was fortunate to be the ranking member and I was uh, tabbed by my leader to be on the committee. So we had tons of meetings about it and it went down to the wire. And while we were supposed to be done at midnight going into August 1st, we got to an agreement on that bill at about five o'clock in the morning because we never closed session. We weren't done with it until about 10 o'clock that morning. So uh, that was a 24 hour or so marathon session. But we, you know, finally when we had our feet to the fire, we got worked on. Um, so out of that, the legislation authorized the Mass Gaming Commission to grant in-person licenses at gaming establishments, including casinos, racetracks, and simulcast facilities, as well as mobile licenses through mobile applications or a digital platform. 
Uh, the time of the passage of the legislation uh, assumed generation of an estimated $60 million in annual tax revenue for Massachusetts, uh, in addition to collecting up to 70 or $80 million in initial licensing fees, which must be renewed every five years. Uh, the revenue collected will be distributed to municipalities uh, for economic, workforce, education, and public health priorities. Uh, when you look more specifically at the language, 15% tax is on in-person wagering. That comes off of the entity working it. It's not like the, the VIG really gets thrown to us. Um, and a 20% tax on mobile wagering. The legislation created a Workforce Investment Trust Fund and Youth Development and Achievement Fund, which would receive 17.5% and 1% respectively of the revenue generated by the taxes and the licensing fees. The rest of the funds will go to the existing gaming local aid fund. So this is going to be a new form of local aid. 27.5% uh, of that will be going back distributed evenly through 351 cities and towns. That was one of the big things when we were looking at it. Some of my colleagues said, hey, it should only be where people are, are betting. They should get the, uh, you know, the benefit of that. And I said, no, no, no. We want fair and equitable. Let's be fair and equitable. Um, so, and then continuing. Uh, Public Health Trust Fund got 9%, and the General Fund, which allows us to do kind of whatever we want with it, uh, gets 45%. So the funds in the Workforce Investment Trust Fund will be used to develop and strengthen workforce opportunities for low-income communities and vulnerable youth and young adults, including to promote stable employment and wage growth. So that's a wonderful economic driver. Um, the legislation will also allow the betting on college sports, with the exception of Massachusetts schools, with the caveat being, and this is something I worked hard to make sure was in the final bill, unless they're participating in an NCAA sanctioned tournament. So when the BC Eagles make a run in March Madness and John wants to bet on them in the Sweet 16, John will have the opportunity to do it. But as a way to protect the student athlete, we came to the agreement that we wouldn't have Massachusetts based teams included in the regular season. I personally would have had it included. I think the only way to actually protect the student athlete, if we're bringing the industry out of the shadows, is to do just that. Bring it completely out of the shadows, put the proper safeguards in place. But we didn't want to let great be the enemy of good, and compromise is what we're all about. Um, so also, one of the very interesting things is directed through the legislation, the Gaming Commission will look at conducting a study into the feasibility of allowing retail locations to operate sports wagering kiosks. If you can imagine going to your uh, favorite watering hole and they have, uh, you know, tunes that you can play on the, on the side or Kino, it might be something similar to just that where you go and they would actually have everything to be processed that way. So, November 21st, my birthday, I didn't fight for it in the language, <laughs> but that was the deadline to submit applications which saw 15 entities apply to become sports betting operators. Uh, three state casinos applied for and received the Category 1 licenses. You have MGM in Springfield, Plain Ridge Park, and Encore. Um, six entities applied for the standalone Category 3, which would enable the operation for a mobile sports betting application. Category 2 licenses are awarded on a rolling basis. They're basically for the current racetracks offering simulcast betting on, sport, on horse racing. And uh, recently it was announced that Raynham Park will partner with Caesars to operate a retail sports book. So if all the entities that applied or otherwise eligible to receive a license do so, the Commonwealth will take in $90 million in just the licensing fees, which again would have to be renewed every five years. So last session we passed an economic <coughs> development bill. I touched on it earlier. Um, there, was a, there was a whole bunch in there. It was $3.76 but it did not include any tax relief provisions, which uh, us in the minority party definitely advocated for, but unfortunately, the conference committee thought different of that. Um, there were uh, tax relief provisions that were actually identical between the House and the Senate in their differing bills, but ultimately the conference committee, when they put forth their own version of a bill, didn't include it. When, I should say this too, just so you know the process. When the conference committee comes out with a bill, you can't amend it. You either vote up or down, yes or no on that. Um, so in there, there was a, uh, the surplus, FY22 surplus of $2.94 went into a temporary escrow fund, 
which was presumed to cover the cost of the Mass General Law, Section 62F tax rebates, which I'm sure we all heard a little bit of. Um, some of my colleagues actually fought to strip that before we were able to administer the funding, but we thought that it would be best to uphold the will of the voter and actually make sure because it was voted on uh, by the citizens' petition some years ago. Uh, so now Governor Healy uh, is looking at approximately $1.75 billion in ARPA funds remaining, uh, which must be obligated by the end of 2024. Um, and the one uh, interesting note that I think maybe some of you did see or at least heard about was in that big economic development bill. Um, I was very proud to say that I secured directly specific to uh, the Ninth Worcester District, so the three communities I represent, Grafton, and Northridge, and Upton, 475,000 real dollars, not bonded, not things that we have to fight for in a, you know, in a capital plan or anything like that, actually back. So it was 125 grand to Grafton, Northridge, and Upton, respectively, for economic development and recovery. And I, pur I purposely made that somewhat vague to make sure that the towns had the opportunity and the bandwidth to do what they wanted with it, what they deemed to see fit. Uh, Grafton also received $100,000 for firefighter radio upgrades. So I was happy to, and with all of these, I was very, very happy to work with Senator Moore. We have a great team going. And we're, uh, you know, we, we're definitely pulling the right direction come every budget. Um, the last thing I'll leave you with, I'm throwing all sorts of numbers at you. I can let you know afterwards if you need anything. But um, there's an immediate needs bond bill that was filed already by Governor Healy. Uh, there was $987 million in bonded funds. Now, I want to tell you something about a bond bill. It's very difficult. It's somewhat easy to get things included in a bond bill because it's, kind of like monopoly money. It's very difficult to get things bonded out. So in a typical bond bill, you might have $300 million worth of projects included. And out of that, in a year, you might get $30 million. So now you're fighting with every municipality who's making a, a wonderfully good argument as to why they deserve it. And ultimately, it's up to A&F and the administration as to what they think is the best fit. But nine hundred eighty It's A&F. Administration and finance. Sorry. So out of the, okay. uh, you know, out of the the governor's secretary, it's A and F's kind of like our ways and means. Okay. They kind of hold the purse strings. Gotcha. Uh, so 987 million in bonded funds, 400 million to cover mass works needs through FY 2028. So that would certainly be good to hopefully keep forward. Um, 34 million revitalizing underutilized properties programs. Uh, and then there's a whole nother rundown, public housing investments, uh, Massachusetts Accelerate Program, grants for manufacturers or colleges to purchase equipment, uh, Commonwealth for broadband, still out there, still an issue. Um, but that's kind of a, a very, very, very surface level rundown of the bill that Governor Healy just filed. Um, so with that, I've gone on way too long with way too many numbers and probably gave you all an ice cream headache, so I'm sorry about that. Uh, but I'm happy to answer any questions, So, and I'm happy to be a, a liaison for the community to the administration and obviously to the legislature. Um, I guess just so you all know, what we do is, and if Evan's watching this at home, uh, I'll be reaching He's out not. to Evan in a, in a timely manner because what I do is I solicit his recommendations for what we need to look for for the House budget. The House budget will come out. It's a little different now because of the new governor. The new governor has a little bit longer, a couple extra weeks, to file their budget called House One. And with all due respect to anybody, any governor who files their budget, I don't know if it's worth the weight of the paper it's printed on because <laughs> what we use as is a roadmap, right? Because we're fortunate where we have a couple extra months to see what the revenues are, see how things are trending before we put forth our proposal. And then the Senate, come, and we do ours in April. So our budget will come out the week before April vacation, that Wednesday. We'll have until Friday at 5 p.m. to file any amendments to the budget. School vacation comes up. We look at all the amendments. We figure out what we want to support, what we you know, maybe don't. And then we go in the last week in April, and we do our budget debate. And we go back and forth, and we try to fight like heck to secure more funding. Senate basically does the same thing. Middle of May, they have their budget. Same process, the end of May, they go forward. And what uh, Senator Moore and I typically do, and I don't know if I should let the cat out of the bag for all my other colleagues who might be tuning in, but we tend to fight for 
similar but varying and differing things. So that way, hopefully we can get them both included come the final budget. Instead of just trying to earmark that one specific thing, we've been very successful with fighting to get both. So at that, I will turn it over to all of you. Question. Circling back around to that 475000 that you got for economic development, of which it will be divided three ways. Yep. How does that – does that go directly to – this economic development committee, or is it spread out among other committees? How is how is that doled out? And so I would I would not to skirt it, but I would probably refer you to Evan to figure that one out because I know the town has to interact with the administration to get it released, much like with a budget earmark too. So for earmarks, if we um, you know say the firefighter radio, we were already able to secure yeah, 100k, that was but separate, yeah. so sometimes in a budget, not in this bond bill, but in a budget. We would fight and say public safety improvements, so that way it's not pigeonholed there either, right? Because in public safety earmarks that we've secured in the past, the towns use it for sidewalks at schools. So that might not be what individuals think is public safety, but to some it certainly is. You know, so I try to not kind of tie our hands on it, but I think Evan would be able to direct you as to where he's thinking of it going and things of that nature. But it's specifically for economic development. Yep, and recovery. So, but okay. but it's. It's specific, but broad. Mm. And so that way it gives us a leeway to try to work with it. Okay. Ray, so have you seen or heard anything about that? Uh, no, I haven't. Okay. I'm very hearing it for the first time. <clears throat> but um, I, I've got two questions. One, uh, Governor Healy is talking about $400 million in economic development money, and I'm assuming that's in that bond. Yep, and, but that's not, But that's not going to happen until July. Probably. No, no, there's, there's, so <clears throat> whenever the legislature acts to take it up is when it will move forward. Yeah. But that being said, some of those things that we're talking about are bonded priorities. So it's great to say that we want to do this and we're proposing the money for it, but then we have to bond all of that out to that exact subject. So it's, it's like a two-step process almost. Well, three, if you want to consider the House and the Senate have to vote on it. Yep. So one and two, I guess it's a four-step process, House, Senate, and Conference Committee, and then ultimately getting things bonded out. Okay, uh, just one other thing, and it, does has, uh, it has to do with economic development, but it, it's kind of off the mark a little bit. Um, uh, nursing home funding. Mm -hmm. um, what's been discussed about um, uh, the current uh, state of nursing homes in, in, in the state, which a lot of them are failing, and a lot of them are closing, and uh, and then there's also the other thing of, of switching some of these nursing homes to mental health facilities. Mm -hmm. So uh, have you guys talked about that or the funding on that? or One of the previous budgets that we did, we actually raised the rate of reimbursement, and the tough thing is the rate, even at the, reimburse, the reimbursement rate that we moved it to, is still five, six, seven, even ten years behind where it probably should be. Is, yeah. Um, and so the, the, the benefit that we have now is we have additional funds coming into the state. And so from that, we can kind of earmark it where we want. Um, so there's been a ton of conversation. It happened before, and I especially said it because uh, one of the two nursing homes in, in Whitensville in Northridge was uh, on the brinks for a little bit. And so I said it to Secretary Sutters. I can remember we were in either Needham or Dedham having a Ways and Means hearing when I was on the committee. And I said, these are some of our biggest employers locally, which help all of the constituencies. So we need to make sure that we get this right, aside from the patients, which should obviously be the top priority. And so we did raise the rate. Um, and I can get you exactly what we got it to. But more needs to be done. I fully understand that. Yeah, I mean, it, it, nursing homes need to be helped I as far as updating and um, in, in their rates, I mean, the Medicaid rate is the Medicaid rate, and that's that's what it is. It's not very much, mm -hmm. um, but but it it's a valued service that we can't lose, and it's dying rapidly. Um, so I just I'm just throwing that out. Yeah, there. no, I appreciate it. Another thing too is obviously a workforce that yes. is there too, and I'm, I'm not saying that one specific industry is suffering more than another. The workforce everywhere has taken a hit. You talk to any business owner and it's very difficult to find skilled labor 
You might be able to find labor, but they want to find skilled labor. So we need to make sure we're investing everything that we can. One of the big things that we did prior to even COVID was um, the Blackson Valley Ed Hub. And that's a way to teach individuals another trade, another characteristic that they can put as a tool in their toolbox, work with Jeannie Hebert in the Blackstone Valley Chamber to uh, work with Quinn Sig and Benjamin Franklin Institute of Technology for that. I've seen a lot of kids from the Grafton Job Corps go in there, and so they're developing skills so they can bring it out into the workforce. Um, another thing that Blackstone Valley Tech's been doing is adult programs at night. If individuals want to end up going back and maybe they don't like the career that they're in, they want to try to, again, grow a skill, they can do it that way too. And the previous administration put a lot of money into that program. Okay, thanks Dave. Absolutely. You've floated out so many figures. Oh, a lot out. of them, Johnny, <laughs> a lot. Um, couldn't keep track of them. Is that money being distributed as grants or is it just earmarked for certain towns? How is that money being distributed? So there's, there's a whole bunch of different things. I mean, it, I guess it specifically depends on which one of the 70 different facts I, numbers I gave you. But so like for some of them, like we talked about the 475K, that's specific to my towns. In that big economic development bill, there were kind of two big sections. It was one that was more earmarky, and there was one that was more bondy. And I didn't want to put those ass in the bond area because I told you how difficult the bond stuff is. So I fought like heck to get it in the earmark area, which we were successful of. So that money, is right there ready to go. The bond stuff's a whole nother animal. But for some of the other ones, for, you know, say um, 60 million for cultural assets, 75 million for small businesses, you know, you have to kind of follow it for way further than what I have detailed here. Some of it is a process, you know, an application process you have to go through. They did the small business program. I can remember, you know, fighting to secure tons of funding through that. Um, you know, they partnered with a couple of different quasis to administer it. MassWorks is a huge one. Obviously, there's the funding in there for that. Um, but through there, there is decent amount of applications that need to go forth. And then I will say this, and I say it almost every meeting that I'm at. If there is a grant that Grafton applies for that any of you or Evan or the select board or anyone knows of, as soon as you apply, please let me know because it is so competitive, as you can imagine. Mm -hmm. It's so, so competitive that if we can be one of the first at the table advocating for it, and we can be the squeaky wheel, and I'll be the squeaky wheel, sometimes you do get that grease. And so I will go to bat for it. I mean, I, and I'm sure Senator Moore did too, but we fought like heck to get that mass works grant. That was huge. That absolutely was huge. And much like all the other grants, and I'm not saying that because of the number associated with it, I'll advocate to a, a more fierce level than a smaller grant because the small grants matter too because it frees you all up, it frees the town up, it frees FinCon up to plug a gap somewhere else, right? You take the money here, you can put it over here now. It helps everyone out. Uh, sorry if this is naive, but with the fact all over the news that we've reached the 31 trillion debt ceiling, what impact, if any, will that have on the things that you've already been promised? And it's not like that will disappear, be frozen, or called back, or is it? I wouldn't think so. Um, there are people who make a heck of a lot more money than me or are a lot more educated than me that could tell you the economic outlook. Um, but that being said, Everything that we have in here is stuff that I have every reason to believe, like federal reimbursements and things like that. I have every reason to believe that we will get some of this money, a vast majority of it, was from ARPA funds and the federal dollars coming down. Now, the tough thing, and this is something that I caution the town with, is that, and I caution everyone with, it's very, very difficult to use that one-time funding that you get in to do something that will be continuing year after year. Yeah. Case in point, I was at a legislative breakfast, I won't say where, but fairly recently, and they were talking about funds that they received, and they put it towards salaries, which is great, and they were able to hire uh, new individuals in their specific field. But the tough thing is when those funds dry up, what do you do? And that's a scary thing, because that could potentially be a little cliff. 
and we need to be cognizant of that for sure. The consensus revenue number just came out recently, and it was under 2% of growth for Massachusetts is what they're projecting. I think it was like 1.6%. That might be a little conservative, but at this point, with all of that money drying up, I think that's a good approach. Now, we've been unbelievably lucky with the with the revenues that have come in the last year or so. I mean, like crazy lucky to the point that it triggered the 62F. We were able to give money back to the citizens. But I just worry about what the next couple of years do look like. Yeah, I mean, I wouldn't expect you to be able to get out, you know, <laughs> your oracle here and <laughs> predict what's going to happen. But you never know when they start talk in very vague, broad terms of, exactly. well, we're going to have to tighten our belts or maybe take very, you know, serious look at things. So yep. you just don't yep. want to think it's going to get called back. Yeah, I, for everything that I've kind of detailed tonight, I do believe that that money is pretty much all spoken for. We're good to go with it. Now moving forward, some of the reimbursement stuff, <coughs> it remains to be seen what happens. Um, you know, the, the tough thing, and I do, I, I respect the heck out of, uh, the two ways and means, the House and the Senate, and obviously a and F for agreeing on a lower number, um, because then if I'd rather under-promise and over-deliver than the inverse of that, you know, we can't say, hey, we're having 4 or 5% growth, and then all the budgeteering people plan for these sort of things, and then we, you know, we leave you holding the bag. That's not a good thing at all. I think um, I remember that happening in the past. <laughs> so I, I would much rather have to do a supplemental budget where we did a couple billion dollars at the end of last year and get more money back out there than have to look at, you know, the other alternatives. Anything else? Well, we can't thank you enough for showing up and giving us uh, some of your time. Absolutely. Great, greatly appreciated. Listen, I'm. It's good uh, to know that we have an advocate at the state house for us. Yeah, absolutely, do I? Um, I take what I do very, very seriously, and I, um, I love what I do, and I'm um, a phone call, a text, an email, a Facebook message. Although I try to see it all the time, sometimes <laughs> I do miss them. I'm not on there all the time, but I believe I'm very, very accessible. So, whatever you all need, feel free to reach out. I think John's gonna be on speed dial at this point. <laughs> but no, honestly, hey, as you do me, absolutely. Well, so, but honestly, whatever you guys need, I'm here to be a resource for sure. So now moving forward, for as long as I have this awesome gig. So thank you for your time. Thank you. Thanks. Thanks. Thanks for, for coming, coming, Dave. I appreciate it. Great to meet you. Pleasure. <laughs> here. Oh, I have a little present for you. Oh, my goodness. Yes. Here you go. Talk about economic development. Yes. Here, it's a pen from my company. All right, and perfect. And it's, it's three things, stylus, light, and a pen. You never know when you might need light. <laughs> Thank you. Thanks, Dave. Let me know if we need to talk like offline. Absolutely, you too. Thanks very Pleasure. much. Congratulations. Thank you. Yeah. All right, guys, let me know honestly. If you need anything, please. Thank you. 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 So I think we can we can officially call the meeting to order uh, because we have now a quorum, I guess, right? No, yep. we, are, we already. We did. Well, we, we started. We just. I'm sorry. Didn't vote. Right. Right. We didn't tell you. No big deal. Parliamentary procedures are not my forte. <laughs> <laughs> it's no big deal. All right, so we're so we're uh, up and running here. Let's uh, let's meet Fiona. <laughs> Hi everyone. Thank you so much for having me. I'm Fiona Coughlin, the new town planner. Um, nice to meet you all, um, and I'm excited to work with you all going forward. Um, economic development is obviously a huge priority in the planning office, so if you have suggestions for projects, want to work with me on anything um, in particular, um, anything that's a top priority that's not already on my radar, John is very close to my office, so I am, we talk as quite frequently, so I think I you know, I have a good beat um, in terms of what, what the kind of top priority projects in terms of like the um, local rapid recovery plan, ARPA funds, et cetera, but I'm happy to chat. And, you know, I, John, I think that you gave my contact information out to everybody. So you should, I hopefully you don't all think email. I gave it to the board. Oh, okay. All right. So hopefully, you know, you know where to find you. Yeah. <laughs> you know where to find me and um, yeah, happy to, to chat further, but thank you all for having me. And if you have any questions for me or about my, my background or anything, you know, please feel free to, to ask. Let it rip.
What's your background? Sure. Uh, <laughs> so I am a, uh, so before um, coming to Grafton, I was a planner on the private side. I worked for a small women-owned planning firm out of Hingham, Massachusetts, um, Barrett Planning Group. Um, before then, I was getting my degree and working at Boston University, but I also have experience prior to that role in working for city of Framingham at the time was a town, um, the town of Braintree, and then I also was uh, working at the Boston Planning, um, BPDA, Boston Planning and Development Agency. So um, I do have um, background and experience in the public sector, but it's been a while, so I'm still, um, you know, getting my, uh, kind of hitting my stride, but definitely getting there. Um, so yeah, that's, that's a little bit about me, but you know, if anyone else has any other questions, yeah. So tell us what your duties and a typical day for you might include now that you're here at Grafton. Sure. What are you focusing on? Sure. So the top priorities have been, for me, at least plan implementation, kind of programmatic, larger scale things, as well as, you know, the typical day-to-day -day duties that, you know, I need to do in terms of meeting, meeting with developers, kind of making sure that we're hitting our goals in terms of our planning priorities. And, you know, that's, that's kind of my... It's been, as I'm hitting my stride, it's been kind of um, interesting because it's kind of playing catch up of all of the things that needed to be done um, since Chris left. But, you know, we, we were able to kind of get, you know, a few grant applications done, a few plans approved. Um, but if going by a typical day, I would get in, address the tons of emails, probably working with um, applicants and developers is, and on whatever projects, um, and then probably grant applications as much as I can, and continuing to meet with John and staff to kind of go over priorities and assess where everyone is and kind of see how I can best plug in based on the progress that's been made thus far, because right now I'm kind of plugging and playing in where I'm needed the most to get things done. Yeah, um, so we've submitted like three grant applications in January alone, and we've won one yeah. for sixteen thousand dollars. Yes, it's small money, but hey, every um, little bit helps. It, it's a yeah. starting point. Um, the grant application that we won is for the development of Mill Street Park. Uh, Mill Street is a rectangle piece of land, and the goal is to basically create that so it becomes a gathering part, gathering spot in that neighborhood um, to create a better quality of life. We're going to put hot spots there to increase the broadband because a lot of people in that area had trouble accessing their schoolwork because of lack of internet. Mm -hmm. That was one of the projects in the rapid recovery right. plan. So we decided to prioritize that through the DLTA funds with CMRPC. And we're also talking further about our, our ARPA money and how we're right. gonna be prioritizing what was allocated to us for economic development. Um, there as well. So John and I have been chatting. So, yeah, yeah. it's a lot. How I many <laughs> days in now? Um, um, about a, m a month and a half. Okay. Just just at the month and a half mark, I think. Today. All, all that. Then you guys subtract for <laughs> Thanksgiving, not Thanksgiving, Christmas and New Year's and sure. all that other yeah, stuff. No, I get it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So you, you, you're still getting your bearings on on what's what and who's who and all that good stuff, right? right. So where do you see yourself six months from now? Well, I definitely see myself get, um, working closely with you all and kind of prioritizing all the initiatives that we have in front of us here in terms of economic development. I would like to be more familiar with, with this group as well as other related groups that you work with. I mean, I'm still um, working, like working to develop my relationship with the Housing Trust. Um, I mean, the Planning Board and I are <laughs> obviously very like close at this point, but I'm um, just kind of continuing to build out and strengthen my relationships and see how things are intersecting in terms of how where we can kind of plug in economic development with housing, with infrastructure, with um, related activities. I also want to really work closely with this group on the master plan because that is something that is kind of a top priority for my board, and economic development is going to be a huge piece of that. Mm -hmm. um, so we're really hitting the ground running. We have a contract that we signed or is in the process of signing. Evan is signing it now um, and starting that kind of community engagement for that piece. So definitely building that out over the next six months. And yeah, so, I, you know, just wherever you need me and however I can be an asset, I just want to make sure that I'm available to you all and 
in like six months from now, we'll be able to make some progress on the yeah. local rapid recovery plan is definitely a priority of mine. So tremendous. Awesome. Thanks. Yeah. Thank you all. Any questions? What I was thinking was one of the first orders of business is to is for us to start interfacing with Evan on that hundred and twenty five thousand to see how that's gonna go. Knock on his door, huh? Yeah, well, as Dave pointed out so succinctly, you know, if you have something, be the first at the table. Well let me do this. Let me become the conduit for the communication. Because mm -hmm. um, Evan is a busy man. Yeah, no, I'm not and suggesting that we all start calling him up. We, we but, obviously... But we, we yeah. could start talking about it. And that kind of brings up a question Fiona asked me is, how much input do you guys want to have into the projects that we choose to work on? Um, would you like to simply be informed or would you rather um, have input or express your suggestions before projects? I would like to be very involved, you know, because you never know. Good ideas can come from anywhere. And, you know, in the collective brain trust, you never know who's going to have a great idea, who might know somebody, who could facilitate something. One of the things that we were tasked with at the select board meeting that uh, you recall that Colleen yeah. mentioned was she wanted to see the Economic Development Committee be more active and not rely <laughs> on <laughs> John, which is kind of funny because we're like, oh, okay. So we had to go back and say to John, by the way, what's your title and explain what it is. So if we're going to take the training wheels off, mm -hmm. then I think we have to be you know, very involved and give input and show that we're not just meeting here once a month to sit here and, mm -hmm. you know, be bobbleheads. Not that I think we are, but. Hmm. Absolutely. Ray, any insight from the select board at all? Perspective? Well, <coughs> uh, I, I agree that, that this board should be, should know about all, all of the projects that we're, that town is working on. I know that there's a development meeting every Thursday. We never really get any input from that or, or anything from that. So we don't know what's what's going on as far as new projects or, or projects that we're working on. I know that you know the thing that we had down at Tufts was great. That was fantastic. I met you know three people that I hadn't seen in 20 years who were looking to come into town to you know to do business. When you have that connection, it, it, it works. And, and like you say, if someone knows someone that knows someone that knows someone, it all works. And, and you know, for us to get a list of, of projects that are upcoming, ongoing, developers they're talking to, you guys are talking to, that's what we should be doing. We should be looking sure. at that every single month. Yeah. You know. Well, with that said, um, let me tell you what's I, I've done two things. One, I'll tell you what's coming down the pipeline. Two, I'll tell you, explain how I've conceptually changed this role. Um, Mass Bio has agreed to come to Grafton in March. Mass Bio is a quasi government agency that's really the backbone of the life science development in Massachusetts. Um, they're the counterpart to Massachusetts Life Science, and Massachusetts Life Science came and they visited us last year. Ken Turner and his team spent a half a day. They got a tour of Tufts, and then we sat down and had a working lunch table where we said to them, point blank, tell us what we need to do to attract more businesses to Grafton, and we'll do it. And here are all the things we have to offer. Please let people know that we're looking to grow in Grafton. And we plan to do the same thing with MassBio in March. Um, a date hasn't been selected yet um, because it involves the coordination of MassBio, Tufts, um, because they actually get a tour of the campus and walk through the labs. Plus, then we have to coordinate within town. And obviously, I'll invite the EDC board um, and the select board to come because we've had some members of the select board who haven't attended the Mass Life Science event, nor 
the grafton is open for house um, and that kind of leads me to the second thing is when i've thought about my role this year i think what i'm going to do is basically try and bring people out for either personal tours if you're like mass life science or mass bio but then also have more graftons open for businesses inviting different constituencies um, that we couldn't invite. I felt terrible um, that when we did the last one, I was disinviting people because we didn't have the space that was over responded. Um, so by doing that, um, say three, three or four times a year, it gives us a chance to get more people in. In addition, you, you can have more interaction between the people um, than what we had last time. So that's going to be an ongoing basis. I've actually asked Evan for an increase in my budget and we're going to use some ARPA funds um, to help underwrite it because those things do cost money, but um, that'll be expensive, but I believe you'll get your return. Um, questions, comments, I, Chief I Charles? mean, I just, again, I'm just going to reiterate what I said. I think that with this committee, board committee, whatever it is, should be updated every single month on everything that's going on, like like mass development taking over the, the you know the science park, like the the multifamily um, uh, the multifamily developer that's that's looking at uh, Sentech Park, you know, to to do that work. Um, the 33 Westboro Road, where are we on that? I, and I know Steve's working on the, all that, and he's got a right. long he's got a long NEPA process to go through and everything, but. You know where are we on the, not us, but where where is Wyman Gordon's in their process of going through the land court? And I know that takes years to go through the land court, but they transferred the property. So where is that? I, I you know I think that one that you know Wyman Gordon's concerns me because I don't want it to all of a sudden be surprised on on the residents because they were pretty upset about it, but. All of these projects and all of these updates and all of these things that are happening at every Thursday's meeting should come to us once a month so that we know what's going on. You reference a meeting every Thursday by a development. Th it's a development meeting every Thursday. Oh, no, you're talking the, 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 the tea meeting in the yes. afternoon. Yeah. Um, a lot of those things we don't talk about. It's basically more of developers coming in to get an idea of how to develop something. And at that time, sometimes, so most of the times, it's more conceptual than anything else. It isn't as if we, we don't talk about Wyman Gordons and the fact that the land was transferred to a different entity. We don't look at those things. What we do is we talk about somebody wants to do an in-law apartment. That may come up during development team. Um, That's more of a purview. Right. Um, preview, I guess. Right. Was, yeah. You're, you're, you're trying study, to right. build yeah. a building. Um, let's make sure that you have sufficient space to go around with the fire truck to meet calls. Um, I could talk to some people and see if you can attend a meeting or two so that way you at least get a flavor no, of I don't, what it I is. Don't, I, don't, I don't need to attend a meeting. I just think that it, there are development projects that are being discussed in this town that this board doesn't know about. We're the Economic Development Commission. We need to know about those things. We not not that we you know, not that we're going to jump in and and no, and get course, involved. But we need but to be we, informed. We need to be informed about all of this stuff. And in like I said, mass development. You know where where are they with the, with the Tufts, with the Tufts land? When is that going to take place? When you know what what's the progress? The, g the gentleman there that, that came to the meeting over at Tufts that uh, went into the, the swine place, how's he doing? He was talked about, you know, moving his operation here. Um, w where are we with that? Not, not that, you know. Well, I, I, I could tell you what's going on, but unfortunately it's going to be more of, I'm s there's really not much to say because until Steve completes the MEPA process, right. Peter can't move can't really engage in discussion as to move. Yeah, no, I, and, so I'm not, a lot and I'm not of it saying, is just I'm just saying, extremely I'm slow. I'm just saying there should be, there should be a portion of this meeting that gives us an update of what's going on. All right. Pinona's working on a lot of stuff. You know, 
if if it's if it's for the public knowledge, mm -hmm. yeah. then 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 you know we should hear about it to, to okay you know give our input or, or whatever it is. All right. So well, we'll definitely enhance the communication. Yeah. Well, I, I think I if, if more than anything, Ray, we, you can have a list of the projects that are, you know, you know, in the planning stages, in development stages, et cetera, et cetera, and just give a quick. We don't two, two minute update. We don't need we don't even need that, Carl. We just we just need. I would we, like it. We need the no no no. Well, we need the list. Right. No, well, yeah, that's <laughs> what I'm saying. Yeah, we need the list. list. Yeah. Yeah. You know, yeah. show us what's going on, and if somebody on the board has it says, hey, geez, you know that's happening or this is happening. Hey, I know that person, or I, right. you know, I right. know people that have worked with them or, or something like that. Because, um, as as you know, as Laura said, but they don't just come here to sit and. Uh, well, pursuant to that, um, before the holidays last year, which actually seems like it's eons ago now, you and I talked about we've, we've got to put together, we were going to do a quarterly press release on what we've done and what we're planning to do so that we get that out to the general press. And one of the things, I don't, how big is our budget this year? By the way. Are you talking current fiscal year or last, last year. fiscal year? Uh, the current, the current. Retire budget's twelve thousand five hundred. There's probably about. It's a question of how much money is available because what I do is I propose a project to Evan, and if he says yes, then we have, say, a thousand dollars. If he says no, then we have more. So I need a. Okay, so find out his response before I can. What I would propose, and I'll check the actual number on this, is that uh, we join something like EIN Press Wire, AP, so that when we have a press release, I mean, there's free yeah, pressrelease.com, but we want it to go out and hit things, yeah. and we also, you know, need to, uh, I can try and start putting together a list of the different uh, community advocates at the different, you know, news stations and things like this yeah. for us for us to hit because Dave is right. You know, the squeaky wheel gets gets the grease, and we yeah. want we want to be on the map, and we in order to do that we have to be active. So yeah, I, I agree with you. It makes sense to buy one of those press press pack press kit packages. Yeah. Um, I think what we'd probably do is like four or six um, initially, so they'll we're committing two, funds, but we're not. They'll give you two free press releases up front, but you want the wide distribution. Right, exactly. And then the thing to follow, you know, to hit all the top spots and then to follow up. So it might cost five or six hundred a year. Yeah. For some of these, it might be a little more, a little less, so don't hold me to the exact number, but I can certainly check it out. Um, and and see, but I mean that's one of the things that we need to do in terms of communication. And then you and I and anybody else who's interested, we sit down and we talk about, okay, what do we want to put in this press release for the f first year? You know, I mean, right. So right away, NASBIO is coming to visit. So yes. I'm going to ask you if you once that date has been firmed up, if you could attend that meeting. Yes. Um, mm -hmm. And I'll bring my camera. We'll take some pictures so you can include it with the press release. Well, I've already gotten a goal. We <laughs> like more. We can put that one in. I mean, we should we should put together um, a thing. Do we have our own page on Facebook or things that we can include on Facebook? You know, no, we don't, we, we, we don't do Facebook. No. Um, well, we should just get a collection of some of these pictures. Okay, so we met with state representative. This one, you know, yeah. okay. Senator Moore, things like this. Right. Um, just so I mean, we have I posted on Facebook about that with a few pictures from the events, just because. Did your picture? I thought the picture with you and Mike yeah, Moore yeah, came yeah, out. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That I took. Yeah, and I put our, you know, EDC logo on there and a picture of Tufts and, you know, wrote about who visited and how successful it was. I mean, yeah. it just went out to my friends, but. Hey, but <laughs> hey, you never know. One right. friend could. It, it, <laughs> from there, it goes out to a thousand. But I mean. Yeah. We, I mean, with, with COVID over and with, but economic challenges persisting, we, we really have to be, you know, 
right. proactive in going for things. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Okay. Um, did anybody have comments on the uh, the bylaws um, that were emailed? Any suggested changes that we should make to the bylaw committee? I, I reviewed them. Um, I didn't see anything. Yeah, I reviewed them too. I didn't, yeah. I didn't see anything Same that needed it, to be changed. Yeah. Okay. And ju just so you know, I sent it off to pal people more knowledgeable to me. Hey, you're doing mess life sciences. Do you see anything that we should do? Mm. Um, so I never got any con comments back. So I'll let the bylaw committee that there's no suggestions for improvement. Okay. Um, can we just go back for one second? Yeah, I got something I want to go back go to. So, well, no, John, you had mentioned you had just mentioned that you proposed a, a project to Evan to spend money. Uh, how come we don't know that? We need to vote on that. This committee needs to vote on on the expenditures out of the budget. So w we need to know what this project is, how much money it is, and whether we're in favor of actually doing it. It's like it's like the advertising. I'm going to go back to the advertising thing. It's it's we, you know, this committee needs to vote to authorize spending money out of our budget. So we uh, we need that information. I was kind of I'm kind of surprised that that, you know, that that's happening. So again, we're going to go back to communication. It's not the, there's the communication is. Is, is not, I've s spent many, many years on boards and committees and, and they all operate the same. So if we're gonna spend money, this committee's gotta vote to spend that money and we don't even know what the project is. So I would vote no, no matter what it is at this point. So anyway. You know, we got to get that straightened out. Yeah, I guess give us an overview of what it is, and, and we'll at the next meeting we'll we'll take a look at it and give right. our, our well. Opinion. Let me talk to Evan and yeah. get get on the same page before we. So I guess yeah. So it, it is it is it Evan's budget or is it our budget? Well, it's our budget. Okay, fair enough. So so, but we don't even know what it is. So. If it's, I, I can assure you, if it's eight thousand dollars to put an ad in the paper, I'm not doing that again. I, I won't. I'll fight to the death with that. I'm not going to do that again. So, whatever it is, present it at the next meeting, and then we can discuss it, and then we can determine whether we want this to go forward. That's what the job of this committee is. Ray, I have a quick question for you. I don't take quick questions. Oh, okay. <laughs> well, then I have a long, involved, drawn out pro question. Pr process. Well, that's actually pretty straightforward. Um, you just made a statement here, and I'm not being at all contentious, okay. but I just, uh, can you explain why if John said, oh, I'd like to spend five, I don't know what the project is either. I'd like to spend 5,000 or 10,000 or 500 on an ad in the paper, why you would say no? It's not that. It's we don't have it. We don't have it before us. Okay, so you would just say no, not on the project, but just on general principle that you don't know what it is. Correct. Okay. I have no idea what's being proposed, and there's going to be a thousand dollars left in the account, in in the budget, and there's twelve thousand in there now, or how much is in there now? About seven. Seven thousand dollars. So. Our budget is twelve thousand dollars. We spent five thousand dollars. I didn't vote on any of it. Well, we did vote on the putting the ad in. Yeah, but, but that didn't come out of that. Oh, okay. It was last year's budget. So anyway, I, I, I don't want to be a pain in the ass here. No, but I'm no, kind of I being mean a pain in the ass. But I need to have. I need to work on a committee, or a board, or a commission. That operates the way all of the other ones operate. No, it's, I, not, it's not John making a decision of spending $7,000 or $3,000 or $2,000. It's not him. He proposes to us, we discuss it, 
we make a determination whether it's good or not and it's going to benefit the town in the best interest of the town and then we vote on it no i agree with all of that i just wanted clarification because the way you said it i wasn't sure if you were opposed to i'm not going to no, vote no, 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 no. on the idea or no. if you were just talking on general principle no. general okay principle. okay that's all my frustrations coming out and i don't and i apologize you know but i thought we worked all this out but i guess we didn't so we need to we need to take charge of this and, and, and move on you know yeah. we need the information we need to know what's going on with the with the with the projects that are coming into town we need to know what's going on with the budget we need to we need to vote on on all of that stuff and, and move on yeah and we need to we need to better communication internally and also externally which is yeah. why I said you know we start doing something outward facing with press releases to let the world know hey we're here we're and open. Fiona, we're I active. apologize. This is your first meeting. And no, it's <laughs> fine. Oh my gosh, I'm just <laughs> and, and, and I'm I'm being. Uh, no, you're not because you know. too much. Uh, I will I will say I've lived in town for 22 years, and from what I've seen generally, not specific to the EDC, mm -hmm. that many times we are finding out things the town when there is a project you get surprised on the back end mm -hmm. with things. So for example, and I've brought this up before at prior meetings, how is it that the, t it's, it's amazing to me that the, the town didn't know that we were going to have to spend over 800,000 in remediation to get out you know, the pollution for where they were gonna dig for what was you know, oil tanks that had been right behind the library expansion project mm -hmm. uh and that that's to me don't, that's don't, that's run, don't run down that road no 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 <laughs> i i won't but you see that was 800 whatever the number was i think it was anywhere between eight and nine hundred thousand so in order to avoid those things happening going forward you're right we have to we need better communication yes, okay. and that's that's for the town as a whole on all these projects and committees but also specifically for us here at edc because we're tasked with doing this. So I don't want to be surprised if I go to a select board meeting three, four months from now, and one of the select board or the planning board people says, well, what the heck has the EDC been doing? You guys sitting on your hands or, you know, what have you done? We need to be accountable. We need to be proactive, you know? And I'm not pointing any fingers at anybody because coming, I mean, the last two, two and a half years and still going forward have been tough. Yeah, right. You know, so we're coming out of that period of somnambulism, if you will. And, you know, this is the year to get active and do all those things. Carl, you were gonna say something? No. No? I think he's gonna call it adjournment. <laughs> <laughs> no. Um, We went and had, and John and his efforts, and I think Ray and I were there, I'm pretty sure you were there, Laura. We went to that function that we were open house Grafton um, scenario, and I thought it was tremendous. Mm -hmm. Yes, it yes, was. absolutely. And um, two, we identified a couple of different things that, that were possibly taking place, Steve Goodman's uh, projects, and then we had a possible tenant for his projects, Etc. Cetera, Etc. Cetera. So all those things were in motion. So then, when someone asks you, "What are we doing?" That would be the answer. Yes. Okay. Mm -hmm. And I guess when they say, "Well, why hasn't it happened?" We have Wyman Gordon scenario going to land court. We have Steve Goodman having to go through the MEPA process. I don't have any idea what the timeline is on that, but I'm thinking probably at least a year. It is. Okay. So nothing happens in economic development overnight. I understand that. And I know you do. I yeah. know you do. I, I guess I'm being, def I'm being defensive to those people that ask these questions. And I guess we would, sh we would want to make sure that they knew that that was taking place. 
We want to make sure that the transaction on the old state hospital property fell through, and now that developer wants to sell the project, right? Yes. We thought that was going to be, you know, a, a, a mixed-use grand, you know, grand scenario, right? And then we find out that Amazon buys a property over in Centec Park. Part of it's in Grafton, part of it's in Shrewsbury. We've been waiting forever for UPS to do something with that large project on the Grafton Shrewsbury side of things. Nothing's ever happened. We we went haywire for that group. I spent hours on that. But no one ever knows about it because it doesn't take place. It time takes, you know, away from the excitement. If you if you get my drift. Yeah. No, and, and things happen, and people forget about it, and you look at what's at the top of the pile. Um, if I might make a suggestion, because you've brought up some really good things, and John knows this, since I'm the secretary here, why don't I liaise with one or either of you? Just And it's a simple thing to do. I can shoot an email out and say, hey, could you just tell me bing, 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 all the things that you've just said, and we can... Well, and I think, you know, Ray makes a great point uh, about getting a list of projects yes. so that we at least have a list, and then we can add our insight yes. or knowledge mm -hmm. about those particular projects, and we can discuss them openly to the public, which they need to know and deserve to know what's taking place. You know, the idea that, you know, that there was an article in the Worcester Business Journal about the Wyman Gordon Project and beautiful picture of the whole thing and the land transfers, et cetera, et cetera, no one said anything in the, in the idea that it's going to be locked in land court for several years. So if everybody gets all pumped up about this scenario taking place, and it's not going to happen for two years at least. Mm. You know, so it's, it's frustrating because we know that there are things in the works, and we should let people know that. But I think, to Ray's point, we should have a list, and then we should have continuously pump out information, you know, I don't know how the heck the, the whole Amazon thing took place with the, the transfer of that property. I didn't even know it was on the market. Well, but that was owned by a bank, and the bank. Yeah, that's right. Okay, yeah. It, right. It, yeah. It, the thing is, there was a transaction between two private parties. Right. So there's no reason then to inform the town. So we found out similar to everybody else that's when right. somebody found it at the registry of deeds. Just, it's just called when you hear Amazon, you think. Yeah. Oh, crap, they bought the UPS property. But they well, that's exactly you know, what I did. thought, right? Yeah, it, they yeah. didn't. Yeah. You know? That's exactly what I thought. And, you know, and I guess, it, 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 to your point, Ray, we, 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 you know, we hear these things through, you know, land transfer records and things like that, and the Worcester Business Journal pops it into the, into the news, and you get it on your feed, and you're looking like, and I, literally, the first call I made, John, what the hell's going on? <laughs> oh, no, it's not that property. I'm like, oh, okay. You know, it would have been UPS to Amazon versus Tr two private uh, hey, parties. Tr trust me, if something like that was happening, I, I, know I'd, that. Be, I know I'd that. be telling but, everybody. Yeah, but the, end of the, the other side of that is we should have a list in yes, all these projects exactly. and where they're at so that we can articulate our thoughts and our efforts to those points. Yes, and we should be able, yeah, we should have documentation on it. You know, and I'm happy to, you know, once we get the list and once we have meetings about it and discuss it, I'm happy to write all of that up yep. and disseminate it so that we all have it and we can... Advocate for ourselves. Well, that too. No, that's, uh, yeah, that's what we'd be, be doing. Yeah. We're advocating for ourselves in the town. Yes. As a committee. But a lot of these things can get lost in, oh, in I, the weeds, oh, the minutia. No doubt about it. I no mean, doubt about it. I mean, this MEPA thing, you know, I, can't, I walked out of that meeting and I said to myself, boy, that was great. I can call Steve and I can go and have lunch with him and get an idea. And I said, you know, MEPA, that's probably going to take at least a year. Nine, nine to 12 months. Yeah. And I know that his operation is efficient. They'll get whatever they need to get in and get it going. But on the other side of that is just. It, it, it just takes time. And yeah. the fact is, since that meeting, I don't know how many times I've talked, but I'm still talking with people from his office, um, like today I put GFI in contact with National Grid for whatever they need to do. Right. So I'm still working and I'm still doing stuff. It's no, I just. Know, yeah, I know that. And, and, you know, Ray and I in uh, Marsha had a great meeting on a, on a TIF side of things with the, with the environmental group there or the 
Feedback Earth. Feed, yeah, yeah, Feedback Earth, and I thought that went well. Yeah. And now that's on the docket for the town meeting, right? Yep. And so, you know, those are the type of things that we should be highlighting. And to your point, letting the, let, the, let the public know that there are things in progress. It might not be happening as fast as anybody wants them, but they are happening. Yeah, and we're on it. Yeah. We're on top of it. As much and as we can be. We're advocating or, yeah. you know. Yeah, so. <laughs> Make sense to everybody? Yeah. Did I, so miss, did I misspeak? No. 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 I mean, if nobody communicates, then you just adjourn. It's right. like, oh, yeah, okay. Oh, uh, let's adjourn. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, taking a motion to uh, to adjourn the meeting. Moved. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Welcome. Welcome. Thank you. All right. Here I have pens for you guys too. All right. I just got.